In this video, we will be doing part one of these Polygel Cyberpunk nails. Please keep watching to see how I do prep and application in this video. So as always, our first step is going to be prep. So starting with the cuticle pusher and gently pushing back that cuticle. I had not done my nails in over a month, so I had a lot of growth. Then taking my Panna sanding band, this is a 240 grit, seasoning it over a hand file so we don't cut ourselves. Then taking that at a very low speed, these clips are a little bit sped up, but I'm going at about three RPMs and just very gently just taking off the shine and cleaning up that cuticle area a little bit more. And then I'm just filing down my nails a little bit. I like to keep mine short even when I'm wearing pretty long nail enhancements, so just taking a hand file and doing that. Next we are taking Young Nail Swipe and we are going to take a lint-free wipe. These are the ones that I use and just dehydrating and cleansing. It's super important to remove any oils and kind of dehydrate before um, so your nails last a lot longer. Then we are going to be using these tapered square nail tips from the Bougie Bar. These are the packs that they come in, so I'm just sizing them out. This one was a little bit too big. You can see how it's kind of going over the side walls. So I'm taking a smaller size. This one fits a lot better and just sizing out the other nails as well. You really want it to fit sidewall to sidewall. Using the right size tip is pretty important for long lasting nails. And then we are taking Young Nails Brush On Glue. I personally like a brush on glue because it helps me control the product a lot better. I put a drop at the center and then just hold down the nail tip for 10 seconds and it should stay on pretty well. And we are gonna trim these down a little bit. So I like to use the magnet and nail tip cutter hack. Whoever invented this, uh, this is such a lifesaver and saves so much time. So basically you just put the amount of magnets according to the length that you want. And look at how quick and easy it is to just clip them and make sure that you're getting the same length. You don't even need to compare them because they will come out the same exact length. Next, we are gonna blend the nail tip and remove the shine. And when blending the nail tip with the natural nail, you wanna make sure you're only blending on the plastic nail tip itself. Then just taking a manicure brush and getting rid of all that dust. We will then go in with our primer. So Young Nails Protein Bond. I like to start at the bottom and kind of work my way up. This is a really great product. I highly recommend it. It's well worth the money. It really helps my nails last a lot longer. Now we are using our um, gel base coat. I'm using Madame Glam gel base coat. And this is a very important step for poly gel. So you wanna make sure you're getting a nice even layer over the natural nail as well as the nail tip and then fully cure it in your lamp. Do not wipe off the sticky layer. You want it to remain sticky. And then we are getting our slip solution ready. I like to use 70% isopropyl alcohol and I like to put it in this dappen dish. And we are gonna do a little bit of an ombre-ish look. It's not gonna be a perfect ombre because I'm gonna put chrome powder over it, but I'm using this hot pink color from Madame Glam called Glam Element. And basically just applying that over the free edge up towards part of the nail. Just trying to get a nice even layer before I go in with um, the As If Ombre brush from Nails by Deb and just gently patting the gel uh, polish and kind of um, blending it up. Again, it doesn't need to be a perfect ombre because it's gonna get covered up with chrome powder. Um, and then just curing that and moving on to the next nail and repeating those steps. So for the ombre brush, just a quick tip is I use it dry and you're kind of trying to hold it very parallel to the nail and just ta use tapping motions basically. And then I like to wipe off any excess gel polish um, with a lint-free wipe as well. So I will show that again here. So the brush is dry and I'm using it very flat and parallel to the nail and just kind of using very gentle tapping motions and then wiping off any excess gel polish because I want my nails to be as square as possible. Once we cure everything, we need to encapsulate it with a clear poly gel. So I'm taking McCart 
clear poly gel, putting a bead kind of where the nail tip meets the natural nail. This is a pretty thin bead I'm doing here because I'm really just trying to make sure that that pink gel polish is encapsulated. We have fully cured the gel polish, by the way. You need to fully cure it in your lamp. I think I mentioned that earlier, but make sure you fully clear the hot pink gel polish. Then we're gonna take our poly gel, clear poly gel, encapsulate all the hot pink and cure that fully as well. So cure each product um, fully before you move on to the next one. Um, so again, just kind of putting a thin layer down, removing any excess product and tapping the free edge because we wanna keep that square shape as much as possible. So this is basically like the first step to building the structure of the nail. These are a pretty good length, so we're gonna have to go in with more poly gel to build the apex and so forth. And then I just, again, like to do this tapping motion here to keep the free edge uh, square and remove any excess product. Now we are taking this light pink color called, I think it's pronounced Le Corail from Macar. I'll have everything in the description. And we are basically placing that at the apex area, cuticle area. So you can see here, I am trying to do the cuticle bead, at least the first part of it. So I'm using the edges of my brush to tuck it in trying to keep the majority of that product in the apex area and then dragging the rest out just gently over the hot pink. This is a pretty light hot, uh, light pink color. So it ombres pretty well. Um, I think using like a sheer color helps. You can see when it's kind of concentrated in one area, um, you know, it's pretty pigmented, but as soon as you start to drag it out, it's a pretty sheer pink color. So. Again, I'm using the edges of my brush, kind of working on top of the product, making sure it's tucked into that cuticle area very nicely. And you wanna concentrate the most of the product in that area to build your apex as needed. And then we are just gonna drag out the rest of that product and it should go over that hot pink pretty well. And once we move on to the next nail, I will show more closely here like the cuticle application. So. I'm just tapping first to flatten it out. Then I'm kind of tilting my brush to the side and upward to tuck it into that cuticle area. Really, You really gotta use like the edges, like the bristles of your brush to tuck it into that area. It's kind of what I found is the best technique. Here's how everything is looking right now. Make sure we fully cure that and then we are gonna keep building up the rest of the structure of the nail. So there's kind of a low area, like I'm pointing here. So we're gonna add a little bit more clear there. So this is where like clear is really great for just like adding more structure, like beyond just encapsulating. So I'm just like filling in that low area with more clear poly gel. Now it looks good to go. And I'm doing this as needed on each of the nails. Um, I think the thing with poly gel is like, you can try to, est you know, you squeeze out the product out of the tube and you try to estimate the best you can, but sometimes you just have to go back and add more. And I work in smaller beads in general anyways. I personally don't like using a large bead for the whole application. Some do, it's a personal preference. I like to work in smaller beads and just build up the structure as needed. Now I'm just gonna add in more pink where the cuticle apex area was looking like it wasn't built up enough. If your apex area isn't strong enough, your nails will not last. That doesn't mean you need a mountain for an apex, but it needs enough strength in my opinion. That's how I get my poly gel nails to last. So you can see I was kind of backwards pushing the product back up. That's the great thing about poly gel because um, I wanted more product in that area. So again, putting a bead down patting it to flatten it out, using the edges of my brush, like you can see here, and really tucking it into that cuticle area and working that around all the sides. And just, again, patting motions are the key to poly gel nails. Everything is fully cured. We are gonna take Young Nail Swipe um, and remove the sticky layer. So this is another important step. So I like to make sure I thoroughly do that on both the top and bottom of the nail and the sides as needed. Um, and then this video is basically focused on prep and application. All of the products used uh, in this video will be linked below. And in part two, we will be doing shaping and nail art. So I'm just trying to break these videos up a little bit more. We'll see how it goes. So see you in part two.